All right, here is the foam board steerman that I'm gonna be building in this video. Uh, if you want plans, I'll leave a link in the description to the flight test forum thread where you can find plans and the whole process that I went through to design and fly this thing. Uh, all you need is uh, four or five sheets of foam, a power pack B, uh, a little bit of plywood for the struts, and you're set. Uh, I recommend using the Dubro two and three fourth inch wheels as they look really good in my opinion. And either a nine or 10 inch prop will do you just fine. So let's go ahead and get right into the build. And I'm gonna go ahead and say that you should probably not be building this if you're a beginner. It's a great flying plane for beginners, but the build is very involved. Just kind of get a basic knowledge for what's going on and then we'll go ahead and start. I'm building in a hangar next to some real airplanes. One of them is a Stearman. And uh, Hopefully the lighting's fine. I didn't really have a good spot inside, so I'm just up at the hangar. So your first step is gonna be to crack these open, remove all of this foam. They B-fold, so the side is gonna be next to, or beside that, if you can see. Make sure that whole length. And then on the back right here, we're gonna bring the side plate in so that it meets up with the tail right there. So, what you're going to want to do here is do a B fold on this and make the back meet up. You're going to want to crack this little split right here so that it can bend. And then you're going to want to fold it up, but only fold one side up first. Do not fold the second side up yet. So now you're going to need this piece. Take a popsicle stick, cut it in half, and then you can glue each side of the stick down on those cutout marks and that'll hold your battery strap. Although I recommend that you use Velcro tape just flat here to stick your battery down because there's not a lot of room and it's hard to get your fingers in there when you have a battery strap. So if you can, do the Velcro tape thing and not a battery strap. You're gonna take the piece that's already folded and you're gonna press it down into that piece and then you can now fold this over to meet it and glue it. So now you wanna go ahead and Glue the firewall on in that direction with the holes on the top and then you're going to want to put packing tape around it to uh, secure it. If you need to cut out this or anything like that after with the packing tape, go ahead and do that for your motor. Make sure that the corners of the packing tape are all flush so that you'll be able to slide a former on there. So the first former you wanna put on is this uh, kinda big old rectangle one, and that's just gonna slide on. From the, the front of the airplane, slide that back all the way until you get to the, uh, the walls of the wing support. And you're gonna slide it so that the corner meets the corner. You don't wanna pass that, you wanna leave a little indentation right there if that makes sense i lost the footage for the next former but it's that double right there and you're just going to put them on the marks and make the gap in the middle the same width as the landing gear wire that you're going to use you need to take this former it's kind of like a circle with uh, the pointy open ends slide that onto this notch and then take this little guy and put it in to this notch so that we end up like that and then glue those in. You're gonna take the former with the flat bottoms and you're gonna put that right on the, the notch that's over the center of the wing and then glue that in. Last, you take all the formers from biggest to smallest, slide them onto the plane and then glue them all in place. So I've got the uh, back formers on and you wanna make sure that this one is level here and then on this bottom part where these corners are you're gonna want to bevel them kind of bevel them up at an angle so that they're flush and then make that transition into the wing oh geez that was bad make that transition into the wing like fine you're not gonna see any of this on the final, but just make that transition smooth so that the fuse or the, the, the skin can wrap over it. 
Now that you have the fuselage all formed up, we're gonna go ahead and grab the motor, the ESC. If you're gonna grab two servos, the tail feather pieces, and some fuselage gun pieces. And then we're gonna put that all together. Now I'm gonna go ahead and bend my landing gear wire. I am using a uh, 530 seconds, I believe. 530 seconds music wire. Uh, it's pretty thick. You can use thinner. But I recommend this because it fits the wheels that I like, so. You don't have to do this stuff. I just did it to make the ends of the rod smoother. It's not necessary. So I think what I'm gonna do here is make another one of these that like extends a little bit more so that I can just have one for the other side that overlaps because I didn't have enough wire <laughs> to complete. So I'm gonna go get some more wire and then finish that up. So once you have your landing gear, you're gonna wanna put it in between the two little slots, slide it down, maybe uh, poke it in with something and then your landing gear needs to be glued in. Look at that, how nice. You're gonna wanna let your landing gear cool for a long time because that metal holds in the heat and if you uh, if you set it down too soon then it might push back up, so. So I got my motor on. It's the, uh, the old B-Pack, but if you're using a new one, just put that on. And I cut a little window right here so I could slide the ESC in there and plug it up. And I got my motor spinning the right direction and now we're gonna move on to putting the tail on. Now is the time to go ahead and do the bevel on the stabilizer side, not the elevator. Do the bev, bev, bev yeah. Hmm. On the rudder, I do the bevel on the actual rudder side. And on the elevator, I like to do it on the stabilizer side because you wanna leave as much uh, foam in this little area as you can. You don't need to put a support. It's already pretty strong, but if you want to, you can put a popsicle stick right there or something like that. You're also going to want to put some uh, hot glue right here and then squeegee it in so that it reinforces your hinge. The tail assembly is to put glue on these two sides of the tab and stick it on to the elevator. Put the notch, uh, yeah, put the tab and notch. Then you're going to take a right angle measure. This piece will work fine. And make sure that that is a 90 degree angle. Look at your eyeballs and with the gauge. Just make sure that's very perpendicular. Do a test fit to make sure that the elevator is horizontal and the rudder is vertical and then glue that in. Remember to add glue to this little tab to make sure that the tail wheel will be very sturdy. With the servos, or what I do at least, is I want to plan where they should be. So. These are nine gram servos, and I put them in the inner fuselage right here in this box, and I just kind of stick them in here. But I want to put one servo in this section and one of this section just behind the wing because I don't want them to interfere with each other when they're swinging. And then I find slots for my control horns. Uh, I don't have them marked here, but I, I may do If it's not marked on the plans, then you get to make your own and be creative. So I've got my control horn cut in a slot. Not glued. And I've got some wire. And what I'm gonna do is go ahead and put that wire in there. Kind of figure out where I need it to be. If you look, then somewhere right about here. I don't know if you can see it. Somewhere right about there, I'm gonna wanna cut it. So I'll cut it a little bit long of where I think I need it to be. I've got my elevator push rod so that when it's attached to the control horn it comes about to where the little notch is for the uh the fuselage to bend in so now i need to make a route through the foam so i can get this to the inside of here and you can take anything you want to you probably just press in right here so i, I see that it, it needs to go through here so i just press in a little bit make a mark and then it needs to intersect I'm gonna do it across so that mm, yeah I'm gonna do it across 
so that uh, one servo goes to the opposite side and this one goes to the rudder. And that means that my crossing line is going to be to be about here. So, I'm going to cut a little slot right in the middle of that and cut a slot in that. And I'm going to unhook this. Make this a little wider and slip it in just like that. And then you can hook it up on this. But first, we're going to need to make a Z band here so that we can attach the servo. And you want to make sure that these holes in the thing are very wide, just they don't have to be pretty make them so that there's plenty of room for the servo to move without friction because you don't want any uh, you don't want this to be pinching and hold up the servo wire so with my Z bends on both sides of the wire I'm going to attach to the servo horn or the control horn that's why I didn't glue it in earlier and then slide that in the slot that we made push my uh, control horn in just for now and I want to make sure that it's not difficult to push the rod it should move smoothly and then you want to take your servo and you want to put it on to the control horn make sure it's centered and then you want to make sure that the elevator is level to the stabilizer and then you can glue both the control horn and the servo in and now I have my servo and my control horn glued in so that when the servo is centered, the stabilizer is completely flat and it moves. You don't need too much deflection with this uh, steerman. And then my resistance on the servo, which is great. And once you got the elevator working, like I said, you're going to repeat the exact same process for the rudder. And then we're gonna move on. When you make your uh, rudder control horn cutout, be sure that you add a little slot for the full extension to go into. Without that slot, it'll the control horn's gonna run into the foam. So my rudder control linkage ended up running right through here. So I just cut a nice little slot so that this can move easily and go right through. And the end of it is going to be right here. So I'm going to go ahead and do a Z-Bend and then mount my servo. And I've got both of my servos glued in. And they both, they both do their thing. We are ready to cover the fuselage. How exciting. Probably the hardest part of the build. Most difficult. This piece. So. What we got to do first is peel the paper off of one entire side. So I'm just gonna use this side and I'll peel it off. Paper on one side and then the other side is just foam. And I'm gonna go ahead and try to work, especially this top section. I need that to be bent. Nice, nice and bent. You just want to keep working this over the edge of the table. The bend is going to take a while. Don't rush the bend. Let the bend happen. I'm working on the bottom. See, that's, that's not bendy enough. We need a more bendy. So just keep dragging it on the edge of the table and giving it that nice bend. Last thing we want to do before we install this is bevel each of these. We want the paper to stay here, but we want to make sure that when we slide it on, we just want to go in between. Like that. So that each of these has a little 45 degree angle right there. That'll help it fit onto the uh, control surfaces better. Now that you have those beveled, you want to take your fuselage here, 
and slide the further ends of each side below the uh, horizontal stabilizer and the rudder goes through that middle notch slide that in until this right here meets up with the middle of that former that is even so right here with the back of the wings this former we want to make sure that the front of this is halfway through the foam of that former. So you should see, from the top, you should see half of that former sticking out. And then you wanna make sure that this is centered. So what you can do is you can even take a ruler and measure the distance from here and mark it in half. I think that's what I'm gonna do. And then we should be cooking. So once we've got an idea of where that middle line is, I'm gonna go ahead and try to put some glue in here on top of that former and on top of this former. And then I'm gonna hold that down and be very sure, very, very sure that it lines up in the middle of that former and also that it's centered. All right, I'm gonna hold this for a long time because I don't want this to come apart and destroy my beautiful eyeballing. So, I guess we're just kind of here for a minute. How's it going? Oh yeah, it's good. Great, oh yeah. Heard, yeah, I heard about that. Yeah. Figure out where your control line or the push rod is going. You can look down the side, I guess. And then you're gonna wanna cut it so that that does not interfere. And we're gonna go to the other side here. Boom. Boom. Just like that. I still messed up. Great. As you can see, it's not exactly easy to get perfect. It's okay if you mess up. It's okay. Perfectly normal and fine. Right, right. Okay, so. I've got my little cutouts ready. Cut out and cut and cut out. The next step is to fit the sides to this former. So what you're gonna do, take the former at the end of the wing. However you can get a good angle, Run some glue down the back half of that and the former behind it. You just wanted this to be about to where the sides are. You don't want to glue the whole thing yet. So we're going to do that on both sides and hold it forever. You want to make sure that there's no gaps in between the former and the skin. You want to look in here? I can't show this on video, but like, you have to, there should not be skin, fuselage skin peeling up from the former. You want it to be flush with the former all the way around. That's why we don't do all of them at once. We're just doing these two right now. You're just gonna hold this and continue holding it until you die. That was stupid, I'm not putting that in the video. You're just gonna hold this until you get old and then we'll move to the other side. And I'm gonna go ahead and do the exact same deal on this side. Making sure that the skin is fully contacting the former and that there is no gap in between the two pieces. And then you're just gonna hold this till you have a beard. So now that that is more or less sturdy, we're gonna move forward. So basically just take these side plates as they are, glue them on both sides, top and the bottom of these formers, and just make sure that there's a nice fit all the way up to the front, okay? You can do that by yourself. You don't need my supervision. Actually. On the landing gear here, you just wanna cut a slot for the landing gear to slide in and continue to wrap it around these formers. Go from the, glue the tops of these first and then move down, okay? Tops, then move down, cut a slot for that. This is the, uh, the future me speaking. You just wanna go from the back forward on the top 
and then you come back around to the bottom and I'm just doing one at a time to uh, go forward. I'm working my way forward on the bottom, as should you. The very front of the bottom, what I'm gonna do is put glue right from the back side actually, but I'm gonna put glue in between this and on this former and this former, and I'm gonna squeeze them together and down so that it makes that gap sealed and it fits the former. You should end up with a really nice shape here that goes right to the edges of where the, uh, the hatch is gonna be. And this bottom piece should go to about the middle. It might be an angle, you, you can cut it later, it's whatever. Everyone's gonna have a different build. This one's different than the last one I made. So I've got the front section finished. Uh, mine didn't line up great, but when you fold these, you're gonna wanna make sure that's, uh, so I've got my front end on the bottom finished up nicely. It's going to be very different for everyone. I can tell you this build is a lot different from the first one I did. Uh, places like this, that's not supposed to be there. That fit perfectly on my last build. So it's just it just varies a lot, but this is great because I'm going to show you how I go about fixing, taking something that's misaligned and making it look good. Everyone's going to have a different fit for every part. So it's all about how you can make the way that your parts fit look good, if that makes sense, or I just sound really dumb right now but I think it makes sense. Move further to the back. The second former from the back, I'm gonna go ahead and glue the sides, both sides, and hold that, and then I'm gonna move to the further back former, and I'm also gonna glue both sides. I'm gonna do them at separate times, though. So we're getting into the part where it's very important to be careful. This, this part's very easy to make a bunch of wrinkles. Not that it's the end of the world, because I hated the way my last plan looked and everyone thought it was beautiful. <laughs> so, people don't notice wrinkles. As long as you don't think about it too much, it's fine. No one looks at the bottom back half of the fuselage anyways. So, we're gonna have to fold these over and they should meet, mine meet pretty well. Uh, however, I'm gonna go ahead and bevel these so that they, uh, they can, like, notch together better, if that makes sense. But I'm gonna go from the front to the back, and I'm just gonna be very attentive to where I might need, I might need to cut these a little bit to make them fit better, although I think a bevel's just enough. It's all about how you personalize it. Personalize it to make the parts that you have fit. Don't be like stressing because something doesn't fit. It's just, it's easy. Just make some bevels, make it fit together all nice. And this step is really nothing to sweat. For example, I'll just go ahead here. Cut a bevel, boom, other side. Cut a bevel, boom. Get that scrap bone out. And when I fold it together, yeah, that's almost perfect already. I didn't have to work that hard that time. But I, I can see that at the end, they meet fine in the, in the front, right? But at the end, I can see they're overlapping. So I'm gonna take a little bit off of this side. Not much, just a little bit. Maybe it was probably like a few millimeters. Look at that, made it fit perfect, just with that little amount. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glue one side and hold it like that. Just this section, not, not these sections in the back. Just this section. Then I'm gonna glue the other one down on the other side and that should meet up. So, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. When I fold this over, I can now see that it's overlapping a little too much. Although, if I bubble it a little, it comes perfect. So I'm just gonna bubble it a little. Uh, which means that some of this is not gonna be on the former, but that's fine because you won't be able to tell. So I managed to get this section glued on and finished with no major wrinkles. Gonna keep
keep moving further back. I'm gonna go ahead and bevel the next section. Actually, I'm gonna bevel all of these just to go ahead and get it out of the way. Just work your way back each time. Put them together, see where they overlap, cut, cut off what you need to. Uh, just make it line up nice and uh, try not to get major wrinkles. If you get a major wrinkle, it's fine. Thing, things happen. No one's gonna notice it, I bet. So, I got all my sections uh, put up except for the last one. Got no major wrinkles so far. I'm actually really happy with how this turned out. We're getting really close to finishing this piece. It's You're probably tired of it, but I'm, I know I'm tired of it. Just like the other peaches, piece, pieces, and then just do the best you can to keep the seam tight there. Uh, on this, for example, you're going to want to make sure you glue that. Just do your little finishing touches, make it look all nice. So I've got my tail section. Actually, this entire fuselage skin, mostly done, needs a little minor adjustments. For example, right here, this doesn't meet up like I want it to. I think I'm gonna add a little piece that is like a little triangle that comes up to there. And we're also going to want to cut this piece so that it lines up with the middle of this former. Just cut it right down there and on this side. I have like a little gap right here. And what I've done on the rudder section is just put a piece of scrap foam right in there so that you can't really tell. So I'm just gonna do that on both sides, fill it in with a little foam, glue it. I added a small triangle right here to help join that. I think it looks just fine, pretty good. I filled in all of these holes. I'm gonna leave this like that for the uh, control horn. And I think this all looks really good. So we're gonna move on to the cockpit spin skin now. The next significant piece is the cockpit skin, this piece. Uh, we're gonna wanna peel one side of the paper off and then form it over the edge of the table so it's curved. So you're gonna need some blue tape, painter's tape, whatever you call it, low tack. Something that's not gonna rip the paper up when you take it off. So, I'm gonna, just gonna get a few pieces of tape torn off for me. I like to do three on each side. You can do whatever you want. Line this up, make sure it fits okay. Looks like mine fits well. I'm gonna go ahead and bevel them slightly. Bevel the edges just a little bit. Grab some tape, line it up at the back corner, pull tight, and tape it. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the middle piece. Going to pull tight and tape that so that there's not much of a gap right here on the side. And what I can see from here is that we are terribly aligned. That's a lot of space that doesn't need to be there. Uh, the middle is bubbling a bit, so I'm just gonna cut a little off. And now the middle fits very nicely, so I'm gonna go ahead and tape the middle. Shave a little bit off. Move and don't cut big pieces off at a time. You wanna Shave a little off, and then see what you got, and then shave a little off, and then see what you got. So, that looks good. So I'm gonna take the tape off of one side, and I'm gonna put dots of glue in the middle of this one, in the middle of this one, and then back here. And then I'm gonna fold it over, and use these to hold it while that cools. And then you're just gonna glue both sides after that, and then you're done with this piece. So I've got the cockpit on there. And what I'm gonna do is cut the front of this, the center line of that former. If you haven't noticed, finding the center line 
of formers is a pretty common theme. We're gonna grab our next piece, this one, peel the, sorry, peel the paper off of that. We're gonna form it around the table. The wider side goes towards the back. You're gonna put it on and you're gonna want to also cut this piece so that it is halfway on this former. And then you're done with the fuselage skins. If yours needs to be cut so that it's halfway on this, then go ahead and do that. But if not, just leave it as it is because we're gonna need that halfway on the joint. So I've got all the uh, fuselage skins on. And now, this kind of wide rectangle and we're gonna peel the paper off of one side take two handy dandy pieces of blue tape put some glue on the foam and then you're gonna make this into a, a ring and let the blue tape hold it for you Make sure that you get like a flat seam right here. And then you can adjust it to be more circular to your liking. And then you're gonna take that and slide that on the front with the seam at the bottom. And that's gonna go like that. You actually want it to be even with the firewall. Even with the firewall here. This top former maybe. Maybe on these bottom corners. I guess it touches that, I don't really know. And then, with the seam down, you're just gonna glue that on, even with the firewall. And then you can take the blue tape off when the, uh, the bottom seam is dry. Oh, Morton got a squirrel. Twice. And yeah, there you have it. Three times, wow the long skinny rectangle, peel the paper off, and form it around the table once again. With that ring all bent up, you're gonna wanna put a piece of tape on that, put some glue, and this one we're actually gonna let dry before we put it on. So, slide that on, and it's going to meet up with the the former and it might take some uh, struggling with but it will it'll get there eventually seam at the bottom once again and once you got that on you're gonna glue it imagine that you're gonna take this little bell shaped looking piece Bend it around the table. When I say bell, that's a weird analogy, I guess. Oh yeah, first of all, you're gonna wanna bevel both sides pretty good. And then you're gonna wanna uh, fold it around. All right, when you got a good bevel on both sides, guess what you're gonna do? Put some tape on there, then put some glue on there and slide this puppy on. Make sure the seam is once again at the bottom. Might be a kind of tight fit, but that's what we want. All right, I've got mine on. Just slide it right on back to meet the other ring. You might need to push up on the bottom a little bit to get it to fray out on the sides. But if you did it right, this should fit just about perfectly. And then you're gonna glue that. You can uh, trim off any excess that you don't want on there. And once that's on there in an averagely decent manner, we're gonna move on to the engine. Now you're gonna wanna make sure that this ring piece is glued in quite nicely. One by one centimeter square right here. Put it right inside of the outer or the inner ring, the flat one. Just put it right there in the middle good because that's what's going to hold your battery hatch on so moving to the engine you're going to need seven of these circles 
and seven of these. You're gonna remove the paper from one side of these, and then you're gonna bend it around the table. Take a piece of blue tape, oh! Stick it on there, glue it, bend it around to make a circle, and you wanna bevel the insides of that little point, like that. And then you're gonna wanna pinch these together so that they kind of make a point and they seal. And you wanna glue it without burning your fingers like I just did. To speed this process up, <laughs> take a small piece of blue tape and stick it right on that little point that you made so that it holds it together. You're gonna do this seven times on every one of those looking pieces and then we'll take the blue tape off when we're done. We have seven cylinder heads and we're gonna take this piece, the, uh, the engine former, I guess you could call it, and put it on. Make sure that if you, if you have like a wire coming out the bottom, I don't really know how this is gonna work with the, uh, the radial B packs. But if you have a wire coming off the bottom, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut a little relief for that reason. We're gonna wanna glue this on so that the motor is in the center. One of them is pointing straight up and that it's about even on every side of the circle. So this looks pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and glue that. You're gonna slide them on to the, uh, to these. Just slide them on, do what you can. They don't have to sit all the way down. Just do your best. So just slide and glue, and then slide and glue some more. Boom, boom, pinch. Once you've got every cylinder on there, then they each get a cap. Just goes right on the top, or the bottom, I guess you could say. Just put a, one cap on each one, and glue it. Got all the cylinder caps on, you should have 14 of these little uh, rectangle things. You're gonna wanna squish both ends on the table so that it makes this kind of flat on the bottom and like rounded on the top shape. And then you're gonna glue two on each cylinder just like that. And then you'll be done with the fuselage pretty much. To the engine after we've got all of the pieces on there. So we're gonna take this piece, peel the paper off the back then bevel the entire outside. Super fun, right? It's gonna be, it's gonna need to be a pretty shallow bevel as well. If you take the points of this and take a screwdriver and kind of bend them around the edge of the screw or the uh, the rod of the screwdriver, you can get a better shape that'll fit your uh, the cylinders better. And then you're just gonna want to put this right on the middle. Got it pretty good where that is. I'm gonna go ahead and glue that. So basically the hatch is going to align on this piece of foam and this piece of foam and it goes all the way back to the former. So what we're gonna do is kind of eyeball it just to make it. Take that piece of foam and cut back to the former. Connect that, blah, blah, blah. Connect that, take that off. So it's pretty good right on it. And uh, also in the front, you make sure that's... Nothing is blocking that rectangle. Just remove the foam on all sides, and then you're gonna do an A-fold so that the side is above the base plate on both sides. Basically, you're gonna fill this up with glue 
on both the foam and that. You're gonna smear it around, do all that. And then you're gonna fold it up, but you're not gonna fold the, the tab. So you've got the paper coming up right here, and then you've got the tab sticking out, if that makes any sense. Now I'm gonna take some tape, a thin piece of tape, and I'm gonna fold it over about half an inch so that part of it is not sticky. And then I'm gonna put that so that a little bit of it will stick out, just like that, and then you have a little tab to grab on your hatch and pull it out of the plane. I'm gonna test fit it, just stick it in, and rock it back. And I mean, mine fits perfectly. It's not gonna fit like to the perfect contour, but I'm gonna go ahead and make the landing gear or the uh, the tail wheel. So I have this is the main gear wheel off of the, uh, the UMX or the Hobby Zone Champ from back in the day. And what I'm gonna do is take this is actually push rod wire. And I'm gonna take to the point where I have a little bit left that I that I can uh, use. I can cut that too. So I'm gonna go ahead and bend that at a 90 degree. Bend it in a little. So basically what I've made is just this little tail wheel fork. Boom, it goes on there. I'm gonna cut that off later. You know, whatever. So once we have this, uh, I guess you call it a length of wire, we're gonna figure out where where we want this to go. Probably about this much. It's all a guessing game. And that should be pretty good. I'm gonna bend this a little bit steeper. What I've done is made this little tail wheel bracket where the wheel is uh, 90 degrees from this way, and this way, eh, I can't really show that good. And how I'm gonna mount this is kinda figure out where that is. I'm gonna press it in to make a little indentation in the foam of where that needs to be cut. I got an adequate indentation there, so I'm gonna cut it. Just follow the zigzag, follow the zig, and the zag, boom. So I've made this, my uh, tail wheel thing. I put it on this and pressed it in to make an indent and then I cut it. So, and then I uh, ran the end of that through to make it a little bit wider. So how you're gonna put this in for a test fit, you put the top in, push it forward maybe a little, and then you can press this wire in, then you just go down the line and boom, it's in. And that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue that in. Our last step for the fuselage, uh, at least for now, is these gear fairings. Uh, I'm gonna do the other one first. What you wanna do to prepare them is remove the foam here and here, bevel this joint, heavily bevel the back, and basically shave this entire side down. I don't know if you can tell. And then you're also gonna bevel the top and where the wing meets. It's kind of complex, but you'll understand. So our first step is gonna be to put some glue here and here. And we're gonna fold this little piece of paper over. So you're gonna line it up to where the little airfoil looks like it matches. and then we're gonna glue that. So this should uh, contour pretty easily to the side here. So we're gonna fold this down. I'm gonna put glue on the top of this. Like that. 
in this little area where it's going to meet that and along the top of that and I'm going to put it on there nice and uh, conforming to the top piece of the fuselage. We're going to fold this piece around the other side. Just bend this around and glue it to where it's in place. We're gonna repeat the same process on the other side for the other gear frame. So the wing build is uh, pretty standard. You just gotta uh, run something through these to make them wider. You're gonna do a double bevel on the leading edge and you're also going to run something through this one to make it wider. Uh, so basically, the airfoil, this comes up a little bit just to make it a little more symmetrical. I don't know why. It's because the real one has it. It's whatever. So yeah, let's prep our wing and then we'll put it together. So I've got my double bevel in the middle here. I've run a screwdriver through the three, um, the tip of a screwdriver has dragged it through. Uh, and I, I did a big fat bevel on the trailing edge because when I fold this over I want that to be almost flush and I want it to look really good so now we're gonna take our spar do a a fold so the sides are above and then you're gonna put that on the wing when you've got your spar finished, you want to glue the flat side in between those two notches and making sure that the end is flush and then you're going to glue it. So now comes the big important gluey part and I'm just going to put glue on these two for now. I'll do the trailing edge later and I'm going to do my best to line it up on that line. Once you've got this wing done, repeat the same process for the other side. Back side to hold it on, then you're gonna fill this with glue and fold it, hold it on the table so that it has uh, no dihedral, and then uh, you'll be done with this wing actually, except for the, uh, the back covering. I've just taken some uh, paper that I peeled off earlier and glued it onto the back. And I'm going to trim it around the edges. And that should give me a nice cover for the, uh, the back here. And now my rear cutout is sealed with paper. So building the bottom wings is exactly the same as the top except you're going to need to put a servo in there. So what I do, I'm using one of these like five gram servos. You can use a nine. I just use these because I don't have any nines right now. And what I'm going to do is cut my control horn slot about three quarter inch in. Whatever looks good really doesn't matter. So basically all I've done is cut a little relief for the servo to go into. So with my servo centered and my wire in the servo and my control in there. Nothing's glued down yet by the way. That way I have a little bit of flexibility. There is a good place to bend. So I'm going to bend that. Pro tip if you don't want to lose your wire stick it into something like this and then cut it and it doesn't shoot off. I'm gonna go ahead and glue my servo in. I want that to be really sturdy. All right, I've got everything uh, glued in and I put my, my uh, wire on the bottom hole because I want some extra throw on this. This servo does not give me a lot of uh, throw to work with so I went ahead and did that and now you're just gonna repeat the wing build process 
this little this little tab right here you're gonna fold up to meet this cut it where your push rod needs to go through and uh yeah should be good should be good should be good should be good you're also gonna want to bevel the, the trailing edge once again so i folded up the uh the back wall and cut a little slot for my control horn to get or the wire to go through so so far i have laid my struts out on my template and glued them and then taped it for security and then i am going to fill these slots up with glue put these in and then tape it to make sure it stays on and then i'm going to insert it into the bottom uh wing because there's an angle they go out so they'll really be like this i don't know how to explain that but you want to you want to glue the top first and then while that glue is drying hurry and put the uh slide it into the bottom wing so you can have the final fit so i've got all my struts laid out where i want them and i'm gonna go ahead and test fit the center section and glue it so i have my two outer struts connected these are in but they're not slid all the way up because I'm going to wait to glue those in. Got my little notches cut. And what I'm going to do is lift this out and then glue it. And make sure that the center line stays in the center. And then I'm going to repeat the same process on the other side once that side's dry. And then I'm going to go behind after and slide these up into their slots and glue them. Make sure that the angle of attack is level as well. I'm now gluing the center struts all in one at a time. And I'm always making sure that the center line is lined up. If you look down this and you see the rudder in the middle, that it's right above that. One of the final touches is the windscreens. So what I did was I took a blueberry carton and cut mine out so we're just gonna set them down on there to where they look good and then glue the bases in and try to keep it like I don't know stuck to the, uh, the foam all the way around so I'm gonna go ahead and glue mine in and then we'll see how that looks but yeah it's ready to fly now. Just make sure all your control services are right before you uh, take off. It's pretty, uh, it's durable in the air. I don't think you're gonna have any problem with the top wing when you're in the air, but if you crash pretty hard, there's a good chance your top wing is gonna come a little loose. But uh, yeah, let me know what you think. Go on the forum, tell me what's up. Show me your builds, let me know any suggestions of changes I could do, and yeah, keep me updated. Thanks for building this thing.